Yo, what is up guys? Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a chilled, groovy Frank Zappa inspired track. Uh, I'm thinking of doing this as like a series where I just show you some of my personal tracks that I'm working on and you know, maybe after a few episodes come out, then there'll be enough for like an album or an EP or something like that. Uh, so let me know if you'd be down to see more videos in kind of this style where I'm not really tackling any specific genre or artist. Uh, yeah, but before I get into this track, I do want to mention that I have a new drum loop pack available on my online shop. It has 40 different drum loops from a variety of different genres, you know, metal, funk, rock, grunge, the whole spectrum really. So they'll probably be something for you in there all right let's get into it so this track is called hot steam uh, and the basis of it it's just around these two chords and that is a d minor seven and an e minor seven so we're going from four to the five and the key is a bit, I think, A minor. I'm not, I'm trying to get better at that kind of stuff, music theory wise, uh, but you know, if something slips out that isn't completely accurate, uh, it's my bad guys. But yeah, I used my Stratocaster because I wanted that single coil funk kind of sound. Here's our sounds. So it's that chord progression, but just with a few embellishments every now and then to kind of give it more interest. Because if I were to just have the same two chords looping the whole track, it would sound awful. It sounds so boring. But yeah, on that, I'd have Amplitude 5, and we're using just the twin reverb, nothing else. It's just very clean, simple sound. Uh, next on to this second guitar layer now I have a few different melodies throughout the track so for the beginning I'm just having just accents you know I don't want this lead guitar to really take precedence of everything else that's happening uh, so in this first section it's we start out with like this chorus and I don't want the lead guitar to take over I want you to hear uh, the chorus of the song. It's, uh, it's kind of subdued, very subtle. Uh, here's how it sounds. And with the original guitar. Uh, but then we get to the verse, and I kind of want it to be take up more of a role. So I'm having uh, a repeating melody line uh, for the second section which sounds like this so you can tell it's louder it's slightly more complex but it isn't taking away from anything else you know it's a repeating line you know, you're not gonna really focus on it too, too much. But then we have this third part where I'm just playing whatever, you know. Uh, sounds like this. I'm more focused on the rhythm of it so you can actually like pick it out all right so next thing is the bass now the bass I'm following a very similar principle here this track and you know mainly I'm a bass player when I go out and play live I play bass that's my main instrument and as a bass player, you've got to subdue yourself sometimes. 
and this is one of those cases. I didn't want to go crazy and throw in a bunch of fills because it didn't really suit this. And especially for a track where there's vocals, you can't be going super crazy with the bass. Uh, it's different if it's a fully instrumental track, then you can maybe get away with going pretty crazy, but I decided to keep it simple uh, and just play what I felt suited this track. So um, here's how it sounds. So a very simple bass line that sort of repeats throughout the whole track with some embellishments again. And one way I suggest doing this is instead of recording like a four bar loop and then being like, okay, well that's the line that I want and then repeating it, you know, set out maybe like 16 bars and record those full 16 bars because you're not going to play it exactly the same every time on that we have nothing because the bass i'm using is so awesome uh for this i'm using my recently acquired ibanez musician bass and you know if you know you know those things are pretty awesome but I digress, onto the drums. So here I'm using Superior Drummer 3 with the main room library. And here's our sounds. Next are the vocals. So for the backing vocals of the track, I used this microphone right here that I'm holding. Now this is something I actually made myself, but worry not, it was very easy. Uh, what it is, is basically I took an old landline phone and I put a quarter inch uh, guitar jack in it and what that lets me do is use it as a microphone in my interface but I can also plug it into my guitar pedal board get effects that way but yeah it just has this really lo-fi quality it sounds really bad but in a good usable kind of way and that's something to experiment with uh, when you're producing a track you know use a microphone you wouldn't usually use for vocals or you wouldn't usually use for something so here backing vocals the main thing i have is this i'm just saying hot and it's acting kind of like a rhythmic because you don't have the clarity from the microphone it is acting more like a percussive element which is really cool in my opinion but yep backing vocals sound like this yeah what i have going on here just a little bit of eq to cut the low end this plugin brit pre awesome plugin then I have SPE Com for the first round of compression. Then I have the stock Ableton compressor, some EQ, and Valhalla Vintage Verb. For everything else in the song, I recorded with this condenser mic here. And just for a much clearer sounding uh, lead vocal. Uh, but yeah, with all those parts together, that is our whole track and thank you guys so much for watching if you liked the video please leave a like uh, if you really liked it please consider subscribing 
Uh, and if you want to support the channel, please check out my online shop. Uh, and yeah, peace. Mm -hmm.